Hey guys, Lake Follow Recap. I'm Andy Montgomery, Bass Pro Tour, Pro Anger, Major League Fishing. Uh, our first event was held at Lake Ufala, and I'm gonna kinda walk you through my thought process for basically the whole week, practice, all the way until the derby was over. Um, when we got there, we knew the forecast was calling for a lot of rain. Our practice was supposed to be pretty much flooded out, and, and the lake was gonna come up uh, this is a lake you follow is a lake that can get dirty. Parts of it can get really, really muddy. It can rise. Uh, fortunately for me, I'd been there before in this situation, even though it like 11 or 12 years ago. So I'd fished four or five national tournaments on Lake Eufaula. Been a long time, 11 years, but I did have some history there. So um, practice, I just didn't put too much effort into it. I don't want to say effort. I didn't put too much well, I guess it was effort. I just, I knew it was going to change so much, and I knew how important um, figuring the fish out, you know, that day was going to be. Um, so I practiced maybe six hours uh, for the entire event. I went out the first day before all the rains got there. Conditions were kind of normal, what they, you know, they'd been kind of stable. Um, and I tried a few different things, and and I actually fished a row of docks that I'd caught them on in the past that I knew was good. And I caught a six and a four. And to me, I knew rising water is not good on docks, but falling water is. So um, it was best for me. All the places that you fish grass and stuff was going to get really muddy. So to me, my comfort zone, my wheelhouse is docks. So I felt like I could probably survive on docks and get to the knockout round to where the water was falling and you know maybe make the championship round so um again six hours in practice that's it but i did catch a six and a four and i had another one just crush the thunder cricket that i didn't set the hook on in very limited time of actually fishing docks so i knew that was going to go south to start with but it would be coming back to me and i needed to survive that first day rolling into the competition um the first day i tried to crank a bridge with a uh, KVD 1.5, which is something I catch them on pre-spawn all the time. I actually use the Bass Pro version. Uh, it's a Bass Pro exclusive. It comes in a black pack because it has a rattle in it. Uh, Chili Crawl is the color that I use a lot in the winter. But them bridges has got so muddy, the ones I was fishing, that it just really wasn't that good. And So then I went to fishing docks, and, and I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but I knew that when things get tough, you fall, always fall back to your comfort zone, what you got confidence in, something you can fish for two or three hours and not get a bite, but still have confidence that you can. Docks is that for me. So that's what I went to doing. I went to fishing some docks, uh, some main lake docks, and you know I caught a good fish early, and, and that got me rolling. Uh, that gave me the confidence that if I bared down, I could probably do what I needed to do on them docks. So ended up only catching three scoreables the first day. Uh, I did catch one lucky fish. I was just went to crank a bridge again, going from one bridge to the to one side of the bridge to the other, and I caught one out in the middle on a spinner. But he was probably on a bridge column. But um, anyway, he was a scoreable, very important fish, and I caught him. But the other two I caught on docks, um, and I, I missed a couple. So there were some fish on docks. We, we kept watching the water level. That was the biggest thing that week was we kept watching the water levels on our phone. We have an off day, so a lot can change from the first day I fish until the second day I'm on the water. And it did. The water started falling. Um, back up to the first day, I had one area down the lake that I wanted to fish, but the wind was just killing it. I mean, it was killing it, so I couldn't fit. It was where I caught the six and the four in practice. Uh, I couldn't fish it in the first day of the tournament. Um, so I knew I had that for my for my second day. You don't know how much boat traffic there is and all that stuff. But I knew probably nobody fished it that first day. It was just, it was just impossible the way the wind was blowing. The wind was blowing pretty strong. So we had our off day. The water started falling, which we really watched the water level. And I tried to fish the docks that I caught them on the first day. It had got super, super muddy there. Tried to make it work. Didn't work. So I rolled on down the lake to the other area that I couldn't fish the first day because it was too windy and you know I kind of got things going in there and, and caught one lost one and I knew the fish was gonna bite late but I just stuck it out in there was able to do what I needed to do I caught uh, some on Thunder Cricket uh, some on a, uh, a jig my Strike King skipping jig 
This is the one I throwed this week, but I caught some on the skipping jig um, and some on the spinner bait. So um, it was good. I got in there. I was you, in these major league fishings. You don't know who in the other rounds is fishing the same water you fishing uh, versus in the past. We kind of knew how much pressure an area had got. So I didn't know. Um, and going into the knockout round, uh, this is where I made. I don't want to call it a bad decision because it was the best decision I could make at the time. Looking back on it, it was bad. I'm always right. Look, hindsight's 2020. I've never lost a tournament looking back on it. But knockout round, I felt like that we'd had enough time for the fish in that mud to get a company, a company, um, get accustomed to it to where we could catch them. I love fishing muddy water. Lake you follows a lake, you can catch them in muddy water. And we'd done had three or four days where the mud had been there. It was still muddy, but the fish would have been used to it and I would have been able to catch them. So I started right there at the, close to the Lake Point, a place I'd caught them in the past, historically a good area. Um, I fished an hour, nothing. And I thought, well, crap. So I ran down to the docks. I caught them on the first day, surely. You know, them fish has got accustomed to the mud and, you know, maybe I can catch some there didn't happen i just could not catch them in that muddy water so finally made it on down to the lake where i'd caught them the, the day before and unbeknownst to me there was a lot of anglers a lot of pressure there um a lot of pressure in the area there's some fish that done been caught but i still got in the area and and was able to catch you know a couple fish to at least get up there and, and get in contention and the pressure really bothered me it's just a ton of pressure um so I thought to myself, I got to find somewhere that's unpressured. And, and to me, that would have been the, the muddy, the water that was unfishable a couple days before that had become a fishable. I thought it had become fishable. The fish had got used to the muddy water. So I went back to fishing in some of that muddy water, wasted another two hours. Um, and with an hour to go, I went back down there to, uh, it was actually Petula Creek, I think it's the name of it. But it was getting a ton of pressure, a lot of boats in there. I didn't have no choice. I went back down there and I made a little run and I got within an ounce of the cut, you know, and uh, just needed one more bite to make it. But, you know, hindsight's 2020. Like I said, if I'd have spent my whole time down there, there's no doubt I would have made the championship. Uh, I couldn't have won. I, I, there's no way I could have caught what Wheeler caught fishing docks. But uh, if I could have just got in the championship, I'm, I'm pretty confident I would have, uh, you know, finished in the top five, four. Um, something like that, you know, three, four, five, something like that. So um, that's disappointing, but I've done a really good in these events trying to fish water that I knew was unfishable in the previous days, if that makes sense. Whether the wind blowed in there, it got muddy, maybe settled out, and just places I know that hadn't got a lot of pressure all week, going in there later in the week and fishing uh, has been good for me. It just did not work out this time. Still don't know why they didn't bite in that mud. They should have. Um, but again, high sight's 2020. If I'd have just got down there and stayed in that area, no doubt I would have made it, but I didn't. Ended up 13th, still a great start to the BPT season, major league fishing season. Um, it was a good start. So, uh, for me this week, um, it was three baits. It was the Strike King Thunder Cricket, which is right here, mainly the white and chartreuse. I mean, this is one of the, this is, I say original, I mean this is original, original, original um, Thunder Crickets that, you know, I put a skirt on way back in the day. Um, this might have been the one I was actually throwing at Conroe when I caught the nine pounder, but anyway, it's just a white and chartreuse. Um, Strike King Swimming Shiner is what I use because I can skip it a little bit. I love the blade minnow, but I can skip the Swimming Shiner a little bit better around them docks. Um, my setup rod wise this year last year i used the seven foot magnum hammer rod this year i'm using the seven three if i were medium heavy i'm a tall guy so i can get away with it um but this custom pro so the lose custom pro seven three magnum hammer rod is is a, <laughs> is a really good thunder cricket rod uh real i use the hyper max for pretty much everything except for some light baits i'm using the new custom light so the Hyper Mags is a tremendous meal. I just changed the handles out. Some people like the round handles, some like the paddles. Uh, me, I like the paddles, so I changed the knobs out. 
but it's a 7.5 uh, Team Lou's Hyper Mag reel, uh, which is a good ratio because it's kind of high speed, but it's still, you know, you can still work them, them winding baits pretty good. So that was my setup on the Thunder Cricket, a 7.3 medium heavy uh, Magnum Hammer Rod, Team Lou's Hyper Mag reel, uh, 7 5 to 1 Strike King Thunder Cricket with the Strike King Swimming Shiner uh, trailer. 20 pound tour grade Strike King line, the new fluorocarbon line is the first week I used it. On my jig, I did, this is my Strike King skipping jig. Uh, I did take some of them. I say I did. I had a friend at home, Louis, actually paint me some because um, the, I, the water was going to be dirty. I knew that. I like to put a lot of orange in it and you know right now we just don't have this color so I made my own but that's the Strike King skipping head. This one's got teeth marks in it. But that's the Strike King skipping head. Uh, my skipping jig, Strike King skipping jig which is a tremendous head and you know we make good colors. If you don't like the color you take the skirt off put your new, co new skirt color on and that's what I did. I used a regular chunk this week. It's just something 90% of the time I'm going to use the Strike King raised bug. But in super cold water or pre-spawn, I still like just the old standard chunk. And so that's what I use. And I put a little piece of uh, finesse worm on there to keep the chunk from sliding up the hook, which is pretty cool because we got the screw lock keeper on my skipping jig. So you can just screw your little piece of worm on there and, and put your chunk on and, and go to it. So um, rod and reel setup for this. High speed hyper mag, the eight three to one. Anytime I'm fishing slack line stuff, so a jig, Texas rig, anything that the fish might bite me on a slack line, I want to use that super high speed reel. Change the knobs out again. I went for red for high speed, and um, so it's the eight three to one high speed hyper mag reel. The rod I'm using right now to skip with is a seven foot Magnum Hammer. Um, rod so it's a seven foot medium heavy custom pro team lose rod it's, it's a really good skipping rod it's a good all-around length you know seven foot typically i use a seven one um and we're working on making a seven one and then some guys have to use a six nine but a seven foot rod is, is really right in that medium range so it's going to fit a lot of people. And this is the one I've used for two years, and it's got the job done. It's, again, it's a seven-foot power, medium-heavy, custom pro um, rod. High-speed reel is very important uh, for my skipping jig or for anything that they're going to flip in, anything they're going to bite you on a slack line. And the 8-3 to 1 is a perfect gear ratio. And because of that, you know, if he bites you on that slack line, when you're going to wind down to set the hook, if you've got a high speed reel, you're getting more of that slack out so you can get a better hook in that fish. And if I skip a bait under a dock or if I skip my jig under a dock and one bites it as soon as it got, goes in, I got a lot of slack that I need to get out quick and get that, a hook in that fish to get him out from under that dock. So 20 pound tour grade fluorocarbon um, was that set up. So that was basically my setup for the week. Again, I've never lost a tournament looking back on it because, you know, you see your mistakes, you correct them. My mistake was really forcing that muddy water. And like I said, I made it work so many times in the past. Just couldn't make it work this week. But still, a great tournament. 13th against this crowd is incredible. A great start to the year. Ironically, I started 13th last year um, at Kissimmee. So I had a 13th. And I backed it up with another 13th. So um, hopefully we can back it up with at least a 13th at Okeechobee and get off to a great start to the year and get things rolling. That's you follow. That's it. We out on Okeechobee.